Hello my friends, it's Game Boy Geek. What do you get when you mix Pictionary with charades, with Trivial Pursuit, with Wheel of Fortune? Huh? Well, with that, you get a game called Cranium. This is an absolutely awesome party game. This game took the whole board game industry by storm back when it came out a long time ago. And it's still a lot of fun today. So if you've never played it, you're doing yourself a disservice. So let's check it out, look at the components, see how it's played. We'll come back and see what I think about it. Okay, we have Cranium set up here for four teams, one of each of the colors, yellow, green, red, and blue. I find it actually better to play with less teams and more people per teams because the game seems to go a little bit faster. Uh, but in this case, we have it set up for four. Now, when you look at the board, you see that there's four uh, different sections of the board. At the start line, the object of this game is to get all the way around the track through the green, through the yellow, through the blue, through the red, and then get into the Cranium do a circle, get in the middle and win. So how do you do this? Well, when it's your turn, uh, when you're on a uh, brain here, uh, you will pick a category. And there's four different categories in this game. The red categories is called data head. And this is typically uh, fact questions, kind of like trivia pursuit type of questions where they ask you some trivia, maybe it's uh, you know multiple choice, or maybe it's you have to guess it correctly, but it's more trivia based. The green ones are called star performer. And these are kind of like charades and uh, humming a song or trying to get someone to guess who, what character you're trying to be. The yellow ones are the word worms. So these are the word type games. These are like hangman or spelling or spelling backwards. And the blue ones are uh, the uh, creative cat. So these are for sculpting clay or uh, drawing like Pictionary or drawing with your eyes closed. So those are the different types of there. So when you start, you happen to be on one of these purple brains here, you get to choose one of these categories. If you get the question right or you succeed, you get to roll this dice. Now, if you got it right the first time, the first question that you did on the purple brain, you get to use this what's called fast track to get to the next brain. If you get the first question wrong when you're on a brain, when you finally do get it right and you roll the die, you would go on the slow track to the next one. So if I'd gotten it correct, and let's say I'm green, after I got the question correct, I roll the die, I get blue, and I go to the blue one. Now, when if you had gotten it wrong the first time, you would have been at this blue one, which basically means it's gonna take you twice as long at least to get to the next brain. So, let's say my guy's here blue, let's say I do a blue question right and I get it right, I roll again, I get another blue. Now that blue here is past this brain. You must stop at every sort of cranium there. So you stop at the cranium, and then when it's your turn to do the question, again, since you're on a cranium, you get to pick which one of these four categories you're gonna have. Now, again, every time, if you get it right the first time, when you roll the die, you get to go on the fast track. If you get it wrong, you have to go on the slow track. And you do that all the way till you get to the end. Once you get to the end, you pick one of the four categories to start on. Let's say you start on the yellow, and you, do, you stay there until you get this right. So if you get the question right, you get to hold on to one of these yellow cards, and you move clockwise on your next turn and try a blue card. If you get it wrong, you have to stay there. So once you're in the cranium, if you've gotten this correct, your next turn you'll be doing blue, and then if you get that correct, next question you'll be doing red, you'll stay there until you get that one correct, then you'll do green, then you'll get that one correct. Once you have all those four correct, you go in the middle of the brain and the other uh, you get to pick uh, which one of these, uh, the other team gets to pick which one of these you're gonna do for your final one. And if you get that one right, the first one that does that wins. So essentially you're moving around the board, answering different questions. And you know when you're stuck on one, uh, you cannot go until you get this right. So you might be stuck on this little yellow card for a little while here, maybe two or three or four turns, but when you finally get it right, that's when you get to roll and then move. In this case, we'd get stuck at the cranium because it's red. So essentially, that's how the game's played and how you go around the board. But let's take a look at some of the actual questions and types of uh, types of things that you'll be doing here. Okay, so each of the four colors uh, have three different categories of questions or, or things that you need to do within them. 
I'm going to start with the red ones. You can see it's red here. This is from the red category. It's called Select a Quest. And essentially, this is just a multiple choice question. The polygraph is one where a statement will be made, and you, your team will have to figure out if it's true or false. Pretty easy, it's a 50% chance. And the third type in the red is the factoid, and that's essentially a question, and you have to have the right answer. No multiple choice. Moving on to the green cards, a cameo is you have to act something out silently, and the other person, the, the other person on your team has to guess what it is. In this case, the hint is a thing, and you have to do silently, and you have to essentially, in this case, you would need to be magnetism. That's tough, but you would have to get your, your person to guess that silently. Copycat. This is actually copying or acting like a famous person or character. And you can't say people's names and things like that. Uh, but in this case, you would have to be Clint Eastwood, and your, your, your uh, partner would have to guess who you are. Again, all these are done with timers, and there's a one-minute timer for all these. The third type on the green one is the humdinger. This is when you actually have to hum or whistle a song. In this case, it's uh, that's what that's uh, that's the way I like it from Casey and the Sunshine Band. You'd have to hum that or whistle that to get your team to do it. And the yellow, the three different categories are spellbound, where you would give someone the word gamut, and they would have to spell it correctly once, and they can't screw up at all. Blank out is kind of like a wheel of fortune type of thing where they give you a hint like clean sweep and the puzzle they give you some letters and some of them a blank. You'll use the paper and pen that came with Cranium to try to figure this out and you have a minute. So clean sweep, those are the letters and the answer for this one was vacuum cleaner. So this was vacuum cleaner. Some of these are tough and some of them are easier but people that are good at the, the word games will be good at these ones. Zelpuz for the last type of the yellow is essentially uh, rearranging the letters to try and uh, figure out what this is. So the hint is cardio coach. Uh, the puzzle is eternal iron spar. So that obviously means nothing. You have to rearrange those letters. The answer here is personal trainer. So again, the hint is cardio coach and you would have to rearrange those letters to come up the personal trainer. There's also one more uh, yellow type one. It's called a, a ganilips. And essentially it's spelling backwards, which is really hard. Uh, for the blue section, we have sculptor aids, uh, which is essentially you're taking the clay and you're trying to get your team who knows it's a food type and you would make a hamburger out of the clay and get them to guess that. The other one is a clue, which essentially is just Pictionary drawing. Um, and a hint here would be a thing. And you would have to draw a robot and get them to say robot. The last one here is Sencho sketch. That's essentially drawing with your eyes closed. Now, Normally, let's say a hint is an action, this would be a kiss. But this one has a special thing here. All these uh, categories, there are some what they're called club craniums. When a club cranium comes up, uh, everybody gets to play at once. One person from each team gets to draw. In this case, they get to do draw with their eyes closed. And the first team to guess kiss uh, would win that club cranium, get a free roll and roll around the board. Once the club cranium's over, the team that drew the card gets to go again, no matter what. Whether they won the club cranium or not, they get to go again. And so it's essentially just like a little bonus round that gets whoever, whoever wins it gets to roll, and then game resumes as if that never happened. So the team that drew, drew that card originally gets to start their turn. And there's club craniums in all four of these boxes. So essentially, those are the different types of things you're doing in cranium. Well, there you have cranium. So what do I think about it? Well, it's sometimes always hard to get people to play Trivial Pursuit because they say, ah, I don't, I don't know anything. And a lot of times it's hard to get me to play Pictionary because I'm terrible at drawing. And then other people are just too shy for charades. So if you had all those three people in the room, would they still want to play this? I say yes, and this is why. You're on a team with a bunch of other people. I like this game best when you have two teams, no matter how many people in the room. That way the game goes faster because somebody knows something. The best thing is, is when I'm on a team with other people, I might be terrible at Pictionary, which I am. I'm terrible at drawing. But you know what? I'm not bad at guessing. So I have somebody else on my team that will be the drawer, and they're a good drawer, and boom, they're always the drawer, and I'm always the guesser. Now, I'm good at the Trivia Pursuit questions, but nobody else on my team is, so our team does well because I'm good at it. Then you get to the charades, where I'm pretty good at acting things out, and I'm good at guessing, so I can go either way. And then you look at the word puzzles. I'm not very good at the word puzzles being an engineer, but my mom's great at them. 
So the cool thing about this game is you can be part of a team and you can you, you use your strengths. So whatever you're good at, your team finds out or you let them know. And when those questions come up, boom, you're up. You're the big person. You're the one carrying them through this quest. And when you're not good, you can kind of lean back and use the strength of your teammates to get you through. So I love this game because it's always different. The categories, are, they use all different parts of the brain, which is why it's called Cranium. And using all those different parts of the brain, you work with your teammates to use each other's strengths. And you use your weaknesses to hide around your other teammates. It's a great game. It's a lot of laughter. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, it's really a different game. It's, it's one of my favorite party games. Uh, the only bad thing I could say is sometimes it can drag on a little while. If you get a team that just maybe no one on their team is good at word games and they get stuck on one of those Zelpugs and they just can't figure it out and they're there forever, um, that's the only downside. Uh, the way we get around that is sometimes we'll play a game where you're always on the fast track the whole time no matter what, and then the game's over within 30 minutes no matter what. So anyway, Cranium, great party game. Whether you're good at Trivia Pursuit or not, or Pictionary or not, you're probably good at something in this game and then you can be the anchor for that for your team. So I really love it. If you haven't played it yet, go check it out. It's still available at all the big box stores. You can find this thing pretty much anywhere.